Welcome back to another reading of the Grimoire audiobook for Destiny. Today we're going to be taking a look at the races cards. This will include humans, exos, and awoken, of course. We're also going to include the ghosts cards in here, as they're a little too small to include on their own video as their own section. Previously, we also covered the guardians and their classes. So if you are unsure of where to start, that's actually the best part. This is part two. Again, thank you all for joining me today, and I hope you enjoy what you hear. Humans. This was our world, our solar system. We were here first, and no matter what the darkness brings, we will be here at the dawn. Humans are survivors, tough and resilient, descended from those who built a golden age only to see it ripped away. Now, after an age of retreat and desperate struggle, they fight to take back their solar system and claim a new future. There are those who believe the Traveler chose Earth for a reason. Now it is humanity's obligation to prove itself worthy of the Traveler's faith. Ghost Fragment, Human From the diaries of Commander Jacob Hardy, Pilot, Ares 1. The mission is a go. Crew of three, Mihailova, Chow, and myself. Immediate departure at the next home and window to Mars. The MREs and return ship will chase us out. How do I feel? I said at the press conference I felt privileged. Historians will read this diary, but it won't take their insight to tell the world that I'm terrified. It's the human reaction. What I wish I could convey is the... the exhilaration. That's the biggest thing. I'm not a spiritual man, but I've always believed there's something transcendent about spaceflight. Something pure. We go out there because we can. Because it's who we are. Now we go because we have to because the unknown came to us. In 14 months, we'll be face to face with it, and by the time we arrive, it should be active again, just like it was active on Jupiter and Mercury and Venus. I wonder what happens if it doesn't stop at Mars. I wonder if it'll leave us there in the sand and come to Earth, and do here what it's done everywhere else. I hate that we're carrying weapons. I understand the necessity, but I hold to my belief. There's something beautiful out there. It's up to us to reach it. Ghost Fragment Human 2 From the Diaries of Commander Jacob Hardy, Pilot, Ares 1 Everybody asks about the words. The truth is, I'm not much of a poet. Ares 1 didn't leave us with bandwidth for anything except blunt competence. We came in perilously hot, trying to select the landing site through the chaos of thickening atmosphere and turbulence that bloomed off the target. A 20-minute round-trip, light-speed delay to Earth meant we could only count on ourselves. When the number three engine went diagnostic during the second course correction, I thought we might go catastrophic. But Chow brought us in. Mihailova brought us in. I just flew the ship. Yuri's one excursion vehicle was built for thin winds and icy dust. We came down into a storm. The breath of God, a ripple of change rolling down off the artifact. We aborted on three sites, and finally I took us into powered hover and brought us down on reflexes and instinct. Then we ran the checklist, suited up, and I left the vehicle. There was a script, and it's true, I botched it. I got my boots down and I made the most famous guffaw in human history. Said the first thing that came to mind, a warning to the others. We're walking into a rising wind. I didn't mean to say anything immortal, I just thought it'd be useful to know. Ghost Fragment Human 3 From the Diaries of Commander Jacob Hardy, Pilot, Ares 1 The hike from Ares 1. You've watched it. Everything was recorded. I think you can get it in full immersion now and fly around like a hummingbird. I'll add what I can. The route was planned. We all went together. The CEV and Ares 1 itself had enough automation to go home alone in the event of crew loss. Whatever we'd find at the artifact, it needed the human element. We carried rifles. They made us heavier and slower and probably less safe. I think the argument about the rifles can be left for another time. What's important is, it turned out well. Look at me. Look at us. You're talking to a 90-year-old man. A 90-year-old who's never been sharper. 
I'm miles ahead of every cognitive benchmark. What's happened to me is good. What's happened to all of us is good. When we crested that rise and made visual contact with the artifact, I don't think any one of us dared dream that it would end this well. We went to Mars at the cutting edge of human civilization, and it wasn't our weapons that won the day. It was our ship, our training, our camaraderie, our belief that if we just reached out to the universe, not to grasp for profit or security, but with an open hand, we would be elevated. We were right. That makes me so happy. To this day. Ghost Fragment, Human 4. From the diaries of Commander Jacob Hardy, Pilot Ares 1. Three human beings stood on a high ridge and saw the shape of the future. Saw rain strike a millennia-old desert. Felt the air sweeten with oxygen and warm water and the beginnings of life. I am sometimes asked if I felt something die. The end of the era of human self-sufficiency. I don't know how to answer that question. I do know that I was changed. Nobody could experience that kind of wonder and remain unchanged. The decades since have proven that to me. I knew I'd never fly another mission like that. I recognized the need for a new love. That's why I threw my fresh cognitive skills into understanding the Traveler. How can one entity so quickly and utterly remake an entire world? Fifty years later, I'm conversant in high mathematics, particularly topological thoughts and the slippery irreality of light. I'm involved in a project to study the Traveler's terraforming actions right now. But I still enjoy the interviews. I like going back to that mission. It makes me unspeakably happy to see how well it all turned out. And it makes me happy to remember I was there. Ghost Fragment Human 5 Hope Hope and standing with strangers. That's what I remember. Hope churning beneath my skin, assuring me there was a place besides this place. A realm that would nurture us, not kill us. The earth was ruined. Chaos and madness and death. We were standing on the earth, where I am now. But why am I still here? It was my turn to leave. I remember. I was waiting with the others like me, and the ships would soon take us away. But to where? Where was this hope? I must have known. There had to be a name, coordinates. Except all of that is forgotten, other than my absolute conviction in salvation. Nothing remains. The Traveler. I remember that now. Which was what? I don't know. Something's stolen my words, the imagery. But I still remember what it promised us. The universe. Yes, creation held in our hands. But it was here for a reason. Now what would I surrender just for the faint chance to remember what that good reason was? The Awoken. The others sing the song of light and dark. We, together, have transcended such unimaginative limitations. It is said that the Awoken were born in the Collapse, descended from those who tried to flee its wrath. Something happened to them out at the edge of the Deep Black, and they were forever changed. Today, many Awoken live in the distant reef, aloof and mysterious. But others return to Earth, where their descendants now fight for the city. Earthborn Awoken who venture out to the reef, hoping to learn its secrets, find no special welcome from the reclusive Queen. Ghost Fragment Awoken Reports from a derelict vessel boarded in the first known voyage to the reef. 1100 meter length, active gravity generator, residual heat, fast neutron scatter, designation code corrupted. Date of commissioning unknown, origin point unknown. Presumed to have collided slash merged with a one kilometer comet. Assessment based on depth of hydrocarbon crust covering the hull, water content of soil, atmosphere of oxygen and carbon dioxide with isotope ratios placing the comet in the Oort population. 
Low-light foliage grown from terrestrial stocks, mirrors focusing starlight into growth chambers, resident fauna, five insect species plus rats descendant from uncertain ancestors. Surface heavily wooded until recently, unknown event triggering firestorm, 70% of wood forest consumed, atmosphere laced with smoke and particles, free oxygen in short supply. No distress calls noted, no evidence of crew or passengers on exterior. Interior scans inconclusive, cleared to attempt approach. Ghost Fragment Awoken 2 I was nothingness. If I existed before, I existed as possibility, as potential, stretched thin across the aether. And maybe there was a body that looked like my body, complete with a soul that could be confused for someone rather like me. What I am now was not yet real. And then I was born, and the universe was free to begin. Others were present at my birth. A great ceremony had just begun. Because newborns are selfish beasts, I assumed I was the object of affection. I didn't notice the singing until the singers fell silent, and then she appeared. She was above me, ethereal and handsome and elegant. I assumed my face was like her face, and that odd idea gave me strength enough to smile. Secrets, she said. Creation is built on secrets and the encryptions that keep those secrets safe. I made my first sound. It meant nothing, but she understood it as a question. We are a beautiful creation, she said, and we must keep ourselves very safe. Ghost Fragment Awoken 3 Fear Fear. That's the only vivid memory left in me. It's the moment when my fear was so thick and urgent that I gave up breathing. I stopped pretending to think. How I remained on my feet was a mystery, because the terror was bearing down on me, like a mountain about to crush my soul. But I have to ask, what was terrifying me? Darkness ruled the sky. The world around us had shattered, and it seemed vanishingly unlikely that we would outlive this one awful day. Yet the fear didn't come from the surrounding mayhem and despair. The source was inside my skin. I was utterly terrified of my own awful nature. At which part scared me? Inside me was an essence woven from beyond. Was I awoken before this? She was still in my head. I could hear her song growing fainter. Gone? Not yet. A new crippling terror was taking over. I was focused entirely on my fear, but I had to make an effort. And it occurred to me then that nothing in the universe was more dangerous than human hubris. I still had this other within, but the human side was what mattered, weak and foolhardy, sure to fail in the next moment. That's why I was afraid. Then someone spoke. Maybe it was me, I don't remember. I was trying to focus, and a new thought took me. My soul lay between those two entities, and that's how I am still. The boundary, the scene, the friction, and that's when the fear began to fade. The Exo Ask yourself, what threatened your Golden Age ancestors so much that they constructed the Exos to defend themselves? Built for a long-forgotten struggle, Exos are self-aware war machines so advanced that nothing short of a ghost can understand their inner functions. They remain ciphers even to themselves, their origins and purpose lost to time. Whoever built the Exos fashioned them in humanity's image, gifting them with diversity of mind and body. Many of the city's Exo citizens live and work alongside their organic brethren, but others fight again, reforged in the light of the Traveler, to serve as guardians. Ghost Fragment Exo 
which in the end is just a matter of substrate chauvinism. It doesn't matter if the system thinks with flesh, or superconductors, or topological braids in doped metallic hydrogen, as long as the logic is the same. And our logic is the same, yours and mine. If I am a machine, then so are you. If you are not a machine, then neither am I. Exominds are human. It is incontrovertible. You understand? I'm going to take that slack-jawed stare as understanding. Now, here's the real question. Why are exomines human? What's the design imperative? Why does a war machine, yes, absolutely, I am a war machine built by human hands, and you are a survival machine built by the engine of evolution. Don't interrupt me. Why does a war machine have emotions? Why should a war machine have awareness? These are not useful traits in the battlefield. Don't flatter yourself. They are not useful. So why should the exomind mimic the human architecture so closely? You know what I smell on you? I smell the stink of anthropocentrism. I think you think that there's only one way to think. That's why the exomind is so human, you presume. Because all higher thought converges. My friend, you should meet the Vex. There is nothing human in them. Now, this is what I believe happened back in the time before any Exo can remember. It explains everything. I think someone wanted to live forever. Ghost Fragment Exo 2 Hi, uh, thanks for your interest. I'm recording this for posterity. Warlock Thananodots die and come back with insight. I'm going to attempt the same process to get it buried memories. Specifically, I'm going to fire a charged particle beam into my head and see what comes out. We Exos have been around a very long time. I want to know what's in there. My ghost is standing by to repair me. Okay. Three, two, one. Stag, Echo Six, Sword, Sierra Nine, Serpent. We are falling into the world. Everyone is on fire. There's a ship above us, but it's coming apart just like a flower, alloy and fusion flash, pierced through and through. The voice says, atmospheric interface, trajectory nominal. Rabbit 2-3, you are outside the window. I think I am the voice. I can see the whole earth below me and the sky we are falling out of is black without stars. Ghost, shoot me again. Rapid 4, Rampart 4, Ratchet, Tango 8-0. We are on the ice. This is elsewhere and else when. There is a mighty aurora and it is reflected in the ice, so I walk between two fires, although the one below is cracked and full of corpses. I have and am a weapon. Up in the sky there is a hole in Jupiter and it tears at me when I look at it. It tears at me. It is hungry. Maybe the hole is not in Jupiter, but in me. Crown, castle, candor, cobalt, coral. Ghost, bring me back. Serrate, sulfur, anathema, amber, actual, aspen. Ghost, bring me back now. Ghost Fragment, XO3. Shame. Shame. Did I ever suffer exhaustion? Someone asked the question, or... Maybe I asked it of myself. Then it looked at me. This moment was real. I told it what every Exo knows. What can't touch you has no strength over you, and there's no place for fatigue to latch on to me. But shame is a different affliction. I'm a soldier. I was forged by hands and forced into the role of a warrior. According to my scars, I fought and fought. Besides bits and flashes, every battle has been forgotten. But I have this clear, awful sense that others died. In my unit, every soldier was killed except for me. Yet despite a thousand chances to be shredded and scrapped, here I stood. No weapon in my hands, making fists out of habit, but with nothing to hit. I'd fought to save the earth. That was my sense of things. But our world was collapsing around us, and every soul was doomed. Even cockroaches and microbes would die. 
And being an expert in the art of losing battles, I saw no ending to this battle but another loss. And I was ashamed. The shame took hold of me. It shook me. Shame stole my mass and my resolve. Suddenly I felt like a feather, like a breath, like any small nothing ready to be lost in the first breeze. But in the midst of that despair, a fresh thought took hold. I was cursed. And do you know what a curse is? It is stubborn. A curse delivered by the gods will hold you when everything else is given up on you. And it was obvious that survival was my eternal curse. A thousand battles, and how many were won? Judging by the evidence, none. And that's why the shame was chewing at my ceramic guts. But despite the horrific losses, I had endured. Closing my eyes, I forced my fist to open. This isn't over, I said. To this enemy, to myself, to the wind threatening to carry me away. This war isn't done with me. Ghosts. In its dying breath, the Traveler created the Ghosts, to seek out those who can wield its light as a weapon, guardians to protect us and do what the Traveler itself no longer can. The Speaker. Built from machinery and the Traveler's light, Ghosts guide their guardian companions in the quest to reclaim our solar system. Every Ghost seeks out its guardian among the ancient dead. The Ghost serves as scout, librarian, and mechanic, waking ancient machinery and cracking alien codes. In the right situations, a Ghost can even save a Guardian from death. But Ghosts are not immortal. As far as Guardians know, every loss is irreplaceable. Dead Ghosts Battered and drained of their light, these Ghosts are, nevertheless, valuable for the information they preserve. Their recovered memories may well prove vital to the city's survival. The problem of dead ghosts troubles the city's scholars. Are new ghosts still being born, or is the number of ghosts dwindling? Will there come a day where no more remain, an end to the rise of new guardians? If that day is coming, then the city faces a desperate race against time to heal the Traveler before attrition takes its toll. Ghost Fragment Ghosts Beyond It is a place, a place casting shadows and demotion. It's a real place, I know. One hot blue sun, say, and other suns, too. Five? I like seven better. What I'm recalling is a giant star with a family of six smaller suns, and you could spend days and nights counting all of the planets circling those suns, except there are no planets, not anymore. The powers in charge have carved up all the worlds and maybe a brown dwarf or two for good measure. With that rubble, they fashioned a topologically creative enclosure, a twisting of space and time sealed behind doors that admit only those who know the magic words. The bones of a hundred planets have been cut smooth and laid out like a floor. A polished and lovely floor creating vast living spaces. A floor bigger than ten thousand worlds catching the fierce glory of the seven suns for light, for food, for beauty. And nothing escapes. Not heat, not gravity. Not even the faintest proud sound. It could be anywhere. It can live in the cold between galaxies, or folded up inside matter, near enough to touch right now. I remember it, and maybe it's exactly as I describe it. Seven suns wrapped inside magic, or it's something else entirely, perhaps. A place still fat with life, an abundance of sentient souls, some decent, maybe a few of lesser quality, and everybody stands about or floats about, or they bounce between dimensions. The point is that the residents of this hidden realm live inside a bottle so perfectly hidden that they can't see beyond their own borders, which shapes a mind in very specific ways. But beyond is their name for a mysterious, doubtful realm that they can't see, which is us, 
of course. Ghost Fragment, Ghosts 2. Two more scans and she could move on to the elevated grid. There wasn't really anything new other than the delta to sea level, but at less than 30% of the way through two raised to the 128 scans, even a distinction without a difference could feel like a brand new shell. Cassiopeia. So numb after months with just her own scans for company, she didn't even pick up on another ghost being this close. Obverse? Wait, I'm sorry, you're Obsidian. Wow, how long has it been? Well, I mean, I know. It's been 6.8 years. It's just an expression. Obsidian floated closer. That's okay. It has been a while. I guess you haven't found yours yet? Cassiopeia projected glumness. Not yet, but I haven't been looking on Mars for that long, at least. I'm optimistic. You should be. I was just at the city last year. A lot more of us are starting to find our guardians late. What's that? Cassiopeia resolved to run a full-range self-diagnostic before the next grid. Two ghosts within 20 meters, and she didn't sense either one? Something was off. The new arrival chirped and spoke up. Hello, you two. I'm glad, Identity Obsidian, to see a friendly face. I haven't been myself lately. Obsidian looked at Cassiopeia. He... Red is nervous. She probably did too. I was beneath the blind watch for a while. Along Siva Mem GH404. While. It was fun. There were puzzles. No one was alive down there, though. Cassiopeia's scan of the new ghost returned nothing amiss. Are you okay, friend? I'm great. Something got in me, but the light, if light, then warning, burned it away. It's gone forever now. Consume. Failure. Replicate. Failure. Enhance. Failure. There was a silence for a full three seconds. Then Obsidian spoke up, his words coming quickly. Well, great to see you again, Cassiopeia. Good luck, he zipped away. Cassiopeia watched him disappear into the horizon. Two self-diagnostics, she muttered. That concludes today's section. I hope you guys got something out of this and hope it helps with some of your theories. Next time, well, we'll see what we cover next. But if you're keeping up, again, I'm reading this from the db.destinytracker.com and you can find it underneath the Grimoire tab. And that way, you kind of know what comes next. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next space time. Take care. Thank you.